Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel and thank you so so much for tuning in with me today. Now in today's video I am going to be sharing my beauty fails of 2022. So these are the products that were released last year and that I picked up reviewed, tried out and that did not work for me. So these products let me down, they disappointed me, they did not work for me or sometimes they were just overpriced for how they ended up performing. And of course I do recognize that everyone's preference, everyone's taste in makeup is completely different. These are my personal fails. So just because something failed on me does not mean that it necessarily would fail on you. But these are products that, you know, I just would not recommend, that I really truly did not like and I did not enjoy and therefore I don't really reach for. And maybe you find this kind of video helpful. Maybe I can save you some coin in case you share the same kind of preference in makeup than I do. I will definitely explain why a product did not work for me, okay? It's not just like, oh, I did not enjoy this product and I did not have a valid reason for that. And look, if there's a product in today's video that you truly love, like that does not mean you should stop using that just because I really don't like it you know I would never disencourage you guys from like using the products that work on you but unfortunately these did not work for me so just in general the tone of today's video is going to be quite negative so in case that is not your vibe just head over to my previously released video where I'm raving all about my favorite products of 2022 I'm definitely going to link that video in my description box below and and also at the end of the video if you are up for something a little bit more cheerful a little bit more happy because today's video is all about the disappointments and also thankfully there were so many more products and I actually ended up enjoying that were released last year than the ones that failed me and if you find this video helpful or if you just kind of enjoy it or find it entertaining in any kind of way why not give it a big thumbs up? That would be extremely appreciated. Also, please do let me know in the comment section down below. Did you guys have any kind of beauty fails? Was there anything that was released this year that you picked up and that you ended up not liking? I would be really curious to know. So I would say without no further ado, let's just jump into the video and let's go ahead and let's uh, talk about my very first product that did not work for me. So let's actually kick it off with the primers and I would say in general 2022 was a really good year for primers but there was just one primer that I picked up that I ended up really not liking and it is the Milk Makeup Pore Eclipse and Mattifying Blurring Primer and this retails for $36. Now the good thing is that I actually picked up a travel size a mini size of this primer and that one only retails for $18 and I'm glad I did because I did not know if I would like it. So sometimes if that option is available, I will always just kind of go for the travel size, usually, unless it's not available anymore. But here it is. So this product, it had so many amazing claims. And you guys know, I love a good blurring primer. And I ended up loving some amazing blurring and mattifying primers in 2022 that I featured in my favorites video. But unfortunately, this one did not make the list. This is truly like a fails product for me because it just did not do what it kind of claimed to do. To be honest, it did not really do anything. It did not blur, it did not mattify, and the one thing I truly did not enjoy about this primer is the scent. This actually has an added fragrance, a perfume in it, and the perfume is kind of strong, and it really kind of smells like some sort of candy. I still can't wrap my head around what this actually smells like. And just having that scent all over your face it's just not for me, you know. It also just did not end up blurring my face. It did not end up like giving me any like oil control. I feel like they had some good intentions with this product, you know. They also made the silicone free and stuff. It's just not performing and it's just not doing what it's claiming to do. So this was just the one and only primer that was released last year that I've tried out that did not work for me in any way. So unfortunately I cannot recommend this, although I wish I could, you know, because I really truly love a good blurring primer, but this... Mm. So this was the only primer that actually failed me, so I would say let's move on to the foundations. However, I did an entire ranking of all of the foundations from worst to best, and I made a separate video on that, so I'm going to link that up here in the cards and I'm also going to put it in my description box down below in case you want to see that. I don't want to spoil it for you because there were actually four foundations 
that were massive fails. So I don't want to be repeating all of that in today's video. So I would say let's actually continue and let's move on with the concealers. Oh gosh, and we are going to continue with the exact same brand because this was also kind of a failed product to me. So this is the Milk Makeup Future Fluid All Over Cream Concealer and this retails for $29. Again, I had my hopes up because when I saw this product, I was kind of like impressed. The packaging here looks really, really stunning, really pretty. However, this concealer is just not it. I don't know why, but this just makes my under eyes look super unflattering. I never reach for this. It's not like a complete failed product, but it just started creasing on my under eye. And it's just kind of like a weird kind of texture. It does not give me that much coverage. I mean, I even picked this up in two shades because the very first shade was too light for me. So I have this now in the shade 11C and I just don't know. Compared to the other concealers that I've tried out this year that actually worked on me, this just fell short, you know. It's not like the worst product or the worst concealer I've ever tried, but it's just not amazing enough. And therefore, it made its way into the fails category. But the next concealer, if I had to pick one, I would actually pick the Milk Makeup one over the next one because the next one really did not work for me at all. So this is the Say Beauty Hydra Beam Concealer and this retails for $26. Oh gosh, this concealer by Say, it just does not work for me. First off, this does not have any kind of coverage. I really kind of feel like a concealer is meant to have some coverage. This is too light in terms of coverage for me. And the texture, it's so wet, it's so dewy. It's always interrupting the foundation that I laid down underneath it. And it's just an interruptive kind of concealer. I just find this to just be completely unusable. I just never use this because it's just too wet too dewy looking, way too luminous. It's nice to have a hydrating concealer. I like some hydrating concealers, but this one is just not it. It just does not do anything flattering to me. My skin just ended up looking like weird, you know, it just ended looking so makeup-y, so unflattering. So this is definitely more of a failed product than the milk one. Um, but yeah, I, I just can't use this. I have this in the shade hb2 i think i had another shade of this as well the shade range is completely off it's so bizarre this really just ended up being like a product that i just wanted to forget that this was in my makeup collection and yeah i would just not recommend this there are so many other hydrating concealers that are performing so much better and I just don't understand who this is made for. I just really don't get it. I don't like this concealer and that's the end of the story basically. All right, so those were my concealer fails. So let's actually move on to some setting powders. And in terms of setting powders, there was definitely one product in particular where I just remember really not enjoying it. And I was like, this was the biggest waste of my money ever. So this is the Westman Atelier Vital Press Skincare Powder and this retails for $75. First off, like if you make a powder that is $75, like make a good powder at least, okay? And Gucci Westman, the founder, is somebody who apparently does not really know much about powders because she probably doesn't really wear powders. And then she also made these weird claims about not putting this powder on your under eye. I mean, you want to set your concealer with a powder. I always put a powder on my under eye, okay? And it's not a problem at all. So she also has this in a couple of shades. Now there is like a pink kind of powder where people were like, wow, this is really amazing. And people were like, maybe you should try that pink powder. I'm not going to spend another $75 on this product, okay? I do have a pink powder in my best of 2022 that is like, what, $22 and not $75. This powder just does not perform. Here it is. It does not really set my makeup. I need a ton to actually mattify my face and it's just breaking up all of my foundations. I've tried this on multiple occasions and I always had to repowder and repowder and repowder it, okay? There are a billion gazillion of skincare claims with this silly powder. Just get a good skincare routine. Don't buy like a powder like that. You can get a K-Beauty routine with all of these amazing sort of ingredients for much less, for a fraction of the price than spending $75 on a setting powder that does not set, that leaves a white cast. Another thing that I don't like about this product, and I was actually really hopeful about this, look, 
the first time that Westman Atelier actually came up with a little hole so you would assume you could poke it through to lift up your pan and get a refill. Where are the refills? I don't see her selling any refills. Like, why are you waiting that long to actually make the refill pans available? I don't know, this is just so bogus, this product is not it. I just thought this would be blurring, it's truly not. It's not blurring at all, it just makes my skin look cakey and weird and it's just not it, you know. It makes it looking cakey actually without mattifying my skin, which is so weird. It is just not flattering. I would, for the life of me, not recommend this and this is actually something I truly regret. And I feel like it's one of the products that I regret purchasing the most out of today's video because it's so bloody expensive, you know? Yeah, total fail for me. And there is actually another powder that uh, is not maybe that much of a fail, but that really had a bunch of claims and that really ended up like not working on me. So this is the House Labs Bio Blurring Loose Setting Powder and this retails for $38. I mean, some people do enjoy this powder. I just happen to not like the powder that much. First off, this packaging, what on earth? You know, it's so big for just such a small container. No, like I don't understand this. This product is another powder that claims to be blurring. It's not blurring at all all and also it's just kind of interrupted every kind of foundation that i use this with it also is not mattifying enough you know it's not setting your makeup in any kind of flattering way all in all it's not working on me but if you call your powder bio blurring i expect it to blur in some sort of way and it's just not blurring whatsoever i also have this in the shade translucent this one is not going to give you a white cast or nothing but it's just not performing that's my big issue with this product and that's why it ended up being in today's video it's overpriced it's not really holding up to its claims so it's just a fail product for me so there weren't really any kind of bronzes that did not work out for me nor were there any sort of powder complexion colors that did not work out for me however there are a couple of cream products that did not work out because they just did not leave a lasting impression on me in the literal sort of way because my skin was eating them up and they were just gone within a couple of hours. And these products I would just not recommend in case you have the same issue. So these cream blushes do work on a lot of people. They just happen to not work on me because they just really disappear in a couple of like hours and I'm left with like patchiness and I can see that my skin is just eating up the product. So they are not really long wearing on my skin. So this is the Ilia Beauty Multi Stick Palette and this retails for $42. Oh Ilia, I am so sorry for saying that. Actually, I gave this a fair shot, you know, I tried to love this. And in the beginning I kind of did, but over time I was like, I don't think I'm a big fan of this formula in particular. Because first off, when I apply this, it is so dewy. It's so glowy. It's way too luminous for me personally. Um, like, I mean, in terms of just like finish, it just looks like I just want to put some powder on there again. And even if I powder this product down, my skin eats this formula up. So after a couple of hours, you know, the blush is gone. I definitely did enjoy this bronzer, but the same thing goes with the bronzer, you know. I feel like all of these have the same kind of formula and they just don't work on me because they just disappear so quickly. As I said, you know, they are not long wearing on my skin and I really don't like that if a cream blush does that. And unfortunately, this Ilia formula does that on me. It's also a little bit hard because this uh, is not a really like big palette with big pants. I feel like the pants are quite small and you can see I made a huge mess with my brush, like dipping in my brush and applying it onto my cheeks like that. It's just a little bit messy. It's a bit too small and the formula, you know, at the end of the day does not work for me, which is a little bit of a shame because I really wanted to love this palette, you know. I also really did not enjoy this highlighter. This highlighter just did not work on me whatsoever and then another cream blush that really does not work and it kind of does the same thing as the Ilia uh, formula but this one is loved by so so many that I just continuously used it and used it and I was like 
am I going crazy because it just keeps on doing this and it just does not look good after a couple of hours. Like my skin has completely absorbed this product. It's just too emollient for my liking. And this is the Rose Ink Cream Blush with Fillable Cheek and Lip Color and this retails for $30. So I actually have this one in the shade Heliotrope and I really tried to give this one a fair shot but again it just does not work out on my skin. My skin eats this product up. This is not as dewy as this Ilia formula but it's just not long lasting and for that reason you know I never really reached for this. I definitely do have some cream blushes that are very long lasting on my skin but again this is one of these cream blushes that just disappear you know and I really try to enjoy this product but unfortunately I ended up just not enjoying it at all. So let's actually continue with a liquid highlighter now I know this brand is going to be discontinued however this product is still available on sephora.com and I think it's also still available on their official website. So this is the Item Beauty Hey Hi Halo liquid highlighter and this retails for $18. I really wanted to love this product but when I tried it something happened to me that sometimes can happen with liquid highlighters. Basically it lifted up all of my products that I laid down underneath it so it kind of made my foundation wet again and it's just kind of mixed in with my foundation in a very strange way and it just accentuated my texture. Also I felt like this dried down way too quickly so it didn't really give you enough time to actually blend it out and it looked super patchy. I just don't have the patience, I don't have the time to fiddle around with a product that is so hard to use and this was really difficult to use. It wasn't easy. Online it looked like this was like the best liquid highlighter ever. So I was really keen on trying this out but yeah no. Mm -mm, this really wasn't it. No. All right, so those were all of the failed products for my complexion. So let's actually move on to the eye category and let's start off with the brows. So you guys know that I always use a pencil and then I just kind of like fill in the rest with a good brow gel. So I'm always on the hunt for something like for my brows. I feel like nothing can ever beat this Kosas air brow gel. And it's just been really, really hard to live up to the standards that this one just set out. This is so, so good. Like, I mean, this is like my favorite one in the world. But there were two that I've tried out where I was just like, I don't get it. These don't do anything or if they do something, they just do the wrong thing. So the first one is the Rose Ink Brow Renew Enriched Tinted Shaping Gel and this retails for $26. I really don't understand how this product can have five stars, like 91 reviews on their website and five stars. Like if I could give this a star, I don't think I would give this anything. <laughs> like zero out of five. It was so bad. I have this in a shade. I have this in the shade 04. But this was such a fail. This did not fill in anything. It did not really shape my brows. It really just scratched the skin. This brush was one of the scratchiest brushes I ever put on my skin. I just felt like I scratched off my skin. I peeled it off. It was that bad. And for that reason, it just really did not do anything. It did do just a little bit. I mean, you can definitely go and watch my full face of rose ink to see because I demonstrated all of these products in videos, you know, that I've done over the past year. But this one, you could see me struggle with this. It did not do anything. It did not fill them in. It really was just such an awful product. And this brush was the main reason why I ended up just disliking it so so much it's so scratchy the bristles are really not soft and I just will never reach for this this was literally $26 out of the window for what for this no this is really really bad and then also another brow product that unfortunately disappointed me and I had my hopes up so so high because this is a brand that rarely disappoints me and this is the lawless hold up soft set creamy brow wax and this retails for $21 so I have this in the shade medium dark and when this came out I was just so intrigued. I was like, yes, Lawless, you go for it. You know, you are coming up with brow products and I really do enjoy their brow pencil. Their brow pencil is amazing. But this, what is this? This is so weird. And my main problem with this was it's not the brush in this case. The brush here is so much better because it's actually quite small. But the problem is the product itself because the product really 
just does not dry down. And when you touch your eyebrows, you're gonna have it all over your fingers. I did not like this formula one bit, such a fail to me. And this is very unfortunate because there were a lot of products that I truly loved from Lawless this year, but yeah, this one, no. Nah. This was just not good. All right, so let's actually move on to some eyeshadows. Now, I don't really have any powder eyeshadows that were complete disasters, thank God, you know, but I do definitely have some liquid ones that were just very, very awful. So this is the Kosas 10 Second Eye Gel Watercolor Eyeshadow and this retails for $15. Do you guys remember when Kosas had this amazing 10 second eyeshadow? This was the product before they actually pulled it and then re-released it and then came out with these weirdos. <laughs> These are not good. I'm so, so sorry. They dried down way too quickly. The color payoff was just so mediocre. I just never reached for them. And it's so unfortunate because they had all of these really fun and cool kind of like colors. Like, I mean, okay, I, I have the shade globe here, which is like probably the least exciting out of all of them that they carried. But this was amazing. This looked like really nice this was an innovative formula it felt like water on your eyelids and it had this beautiful metallic color payoff i just don't know what kosas was thinking they had an amazing product and then they replaced it with this and guess what i picked up four shades thinking that it would kind of be like the same formula and it ended up not being the same formula this is like much more creamier it's not like watercolor whatsoever anymore i don't really understand why they still have the same name they only changed the gel in it i think because they these ones weren't called gel they were true kind of watercolors but this one is just not it this is not it this color selection is so boring and the payoff is not there and just this whole formula is just very forgettable and I would definitely not recommend these. There are so many other like liquid eyeshadows or cream eyeshadows that are so much better. Oh gosh, and then the next product is also something that I definitely would not recommend whatsoever. And this is the Rose Ink Satin and Shimmer Duet Eyeshadow and this retails for $30. Ooh, this was a mess. <laughs> this was a mess in every kind of way. I have this in the shade Satin Olive and Khaki Shimmer. Ugh, that green shade looked like mud on my skin. It was just so hard to get some color payoff. I felt like there was not enough opacity with this cream formula and it was just really hard to work with. I looked like a muddy turtle with this and I've got to say not just with the color not it you know I mean this does exist in different colorways but my biggest issue was the formula here. You know, this formula really kind of was mediocre because this creased, this creased so, 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 so much. At the end of my day, I looked terrible. I really do enjoy cream eyeshadows, but this formula is just one of the worst like cream shadow formulas I've ever tried. It's not good. Stay away from this. Save your money for something else. This is not it. There were so many mascara releases and not that many actually lived up to my expectations. I am very, very picky when it comes to mascara, but none of these mascaras were good. And I would say like, stay away from them. So this is by Honest Beauty and this is the Extreme Volume Mascara and Bold Lash Primer and this retails for $20. Oh man, yeah, so this mascara, I've talked about this kind of a lot on my channel. I feel like I had this in two different videos and this is nothing like their really good mascara. This is their Extreme Length Mascara and Lash Primer. This is actually really fantastic. This is such a favorite of mine. I actually really love this. And then and they came out with this volume version and yeah this really did not do much this also did not give me much volume but this was just kind of not impressive and i just want to stir you into the right direction try this one don't go for this because this is just just so kind of boring and also another thing i did not like was this brush is so big why is this brush so big it's just like oh this is just way 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 too big to be honest and then they always like put in these gimmicky sort of primers like that don't do anything for me. Really not because I actually tried it with the primer on one eye and then on the other eye I tried it without the primer. There was no difference, okay? So it's blue. It's so gimmicky. I wish they would just like do a bigger compartment for the mascara and just leave this primer out. Like 
I don't need a primer, I don't use a primer, and this primer is not doing anything, okay? It's just weird. This one is amazing. This one just disappointing compared to this. So yeah, I don't know. This is just not good. All right, so let's actually move on from this one to the next one. And there are quite a lot of mascaras that did not work for me this year. So this is the Kosas, the Big Clean Mascara, and this retails for $26. So this was not a brand new mascara, but last year this was actually reformulated because the very first version that I had of this mascara was so smudgy it was absolutely smudgy and then they kind of listened to the feedback and then they came out with a new version of this and unfortunately this was too dry this was flaky i mean again such a big brush like it's just almost too big it was a nice idea but get the formula straight okay if you're already reformulating a product and then you're coming out with a product that is still not working what was the point, you know? Just make a good mascara, it's not that hard. I don't understand it. This was so dry, it basically was flicking off. It gave me raccoon eyes, I did not enjoy this. So this was also another fail of a mascara, in my opinion. So let's move on to the next mascara that did not work for me. And this is the Milk Makeup Rice Mascara and this retails for $28. The product in and of itself was actually all right. You know, this actually worked on me in terms of just the mascara itself, it's not a bad formula or anything. It did not flick off, it did not give me raccoon eyes, but I had one big issue with this product. I don't understand how you can make this opening so narrow. So if you had any product on your brush, the whole product would just build up around the edges. It was so messy. It was just not convenient. And that's why I just ended up not reaching for this. The product in and of itself is okay. Just be mindful that when you buy this product, it's just gonna get everywhere. I mean, I just maybe used this like three times or four times and then it was just all kind of like, why am I even using this? This is not like enjoyable to use. So yeah, that was the main problem. So I've got two more mascaras here that failed me. So let's continue with the next one. So this is the Rose Ink Ultra Black Lash Lift Serum Mascara and this retails for $28. I don't know what it is. Rose Ink just did not have any good sort of eye product that wowed me. And yeah, their new mascara this isn't it. This is flaky. This formula is way too dry. This literally crumbled off. It actually has like a little bit of a banded brush and also silicone bristles here, which I usually like. So when I got this, I was really hopeful. It was not bad, but wearing this was not enjoyable because it really balled up. It really flaked off and it was so crumbly. It was so dry and I just really would not recommend a product like that. Uh, yeah, so... This also kind of failed because it did not wear well. And yes, yeah, just too dry of a formula. So let's move on to the last mascara. And this was really a hard decision to put this one in here because I love this so, so much. And this is a little bit of a longer story here with this one because I almost put this in my favorites video. So this is the Kia Weiss, the Impossible Mascara, and this retails for $32. So when I got this product, you know, it was amazing. I actually emptied this completely. And so the cool thing about this mascara is the fact that you can purchase a refill for $28. And that's exactly what I did. And from that moment onwards, when I actually put in a refill in here, that's when the whole disaster started. So after a couple of weeks of like changing this product and actually putting in the refill, it just got so goopy and my brush would just be full of product. Look, when I take this out, I'm not sure if you can see this, but my entire brush is loaded with product and the consistency is just not the same. I was so excited to get a refill for this because I thought this is really cool. I can put in a refill, you know, but the refill cartridge, I feel like something has gone wrong. So I'm really curious to know, have you purchased a refill cartridge on the Kia Weiss one? And does it do the same thing? I'm not sure what it is. It's just dried out so quickly. It's getting so goopy and it's taking up way too much product. 
maybe something is just wrong with my cartridge i don't know it's just not the same product anymore so this is just a sad story because this was a great mascara but for the life of me i cannot like recommend it anymore because of that but yeah that was it for my eyes category so let's actually move on to the lips so all in all i actually do have two different products for the lips category that sort of failed and that i would not recommend the first one being just really overpriced for what it's actually delivering so this is the victoria beckham beauty bitten lip tint and this retails for 36 dollars now this was not a brand new release but she definitely added some shades last year and it was also the very first time that i tried out this product and i actually picked this up in the shade amour Listen, you guys, Victoria Beckham has so many amazing products, but this is the one product that does not work for me and that I would not recommend. Out of all of her products, I literally have most of her products and they are truly great and amazing and of great quality, but this really disappointed me. I don't understand this product. This was weird because when I applied it, it looked like I did not apply anything. The shade looked really pretty, um here is the shade you know but in all honesty putting this on my lips it just made my lips look wrinkly and when this dried down my lips were so dry and i just did not get it it looked so blotchy and i don't know it feels like a gel when it goes on but when you like literally spread this out like why would i spend 36 dollars on a product like that like are you kidding me this is just not my thing. It really accentuated all of my fine lines, like in a very unflattering way. It's not really a shade at all because it's just not doing much. It's not working well. And she has these amazing lip glosses and these amazing lipsticks that I love. But this, no, this is not it. I don't like this one bit. Okay, so we arrived at the last product and the one lip gloss that I tried out this year that really wasn't it and that I ended up not liking is unfortunately by a brand where I usually like a lot of products. So this is by Jane Iredale and this is their Hydro Pure Hyaluronic Acid Lip Gloss and this retails for $26. It looks like it has some color payoff, right? It has some pigment. It just looks like a clear gloss. It's really not it. And also it does not really feel like a gloss. It feels like a balm. And I really don't like that. I did not like the consistency. This is the shade Mocha Latte. And this shade looked so different online. It's a huge problem with some Jane Iredale products, especially for the lips. There's a huge discrepancy in terms of what you're seeing online and how the colors actually look when you get it into your hands. It's just not it. I did not like this formula. The glitter in here, you could barely see it. It was barely detectable. It feels like a balm. It doesn't feel like a lip gloss. It has no shine. And that's something I really don't enjoy if a lip gloss does not offer me any shine. Like, why am I buying a lip gloss? It's it's not it. It's, I just really don't like this product. And for that reason, I would say this was the one and only lip gloss that kind of went wrong. And it's kind of hard to mess up a lip gloss formula. And for $26, I would expect something more than this. And this just truly disappointed me. But all right, you guys, those were all of the products that did not work out for me that were released in 2022 that I ended up not loving. And I would be really curious to know, are there any products that I featured in my video just right now that you actually also don't like, that you tried out, where you go like, oh yeah, that actually really did not work out. Or even the opposite. Is there anything that you love that I featured in today's video? Do let me know in the comment section down below. And yeah, I really hope you did somehow enjoy this video or you just found it useful in some sort of way or just entertaining. So why not give it a big thumbs up? And also, in case you have not subscribed to my channel, why not hit that subscribe button? And until the next one, please do take care. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye. <laughs>